Hi, this is Travis, and today we're going to talk about my Southern California electric bill with Tesla Solar, April 2021. Let's go. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my Southern California Edison bill, um, the consumption and the net metering that I get from them, how much energy I send, how much energy I receive, what it costs, what credits I have. I'll be going through that, and at the end of the video, I'll be doing some questions and answers. Um, I do these videos once a month on my bill. I also do videos on my uh, solar production, so how much I produce every month in solar with my system where I'm at. And I also do videos on my electric car, so if you're interested in that kind of information, like and subscribe, and we'll get you more videos on it. All right, some quick specs on my solar system. I live just above San Diego in the Temecula Marietta Valley. Um, my system is 12.24 kilowatts. It is 36 panels at 340 kilowatts. They're Q-cell panels that I got through Tesla. And my panels place face east-west with my largest array facing west. Okay, well, it's May 11th, and it's about 12.54, and my solar production right at the moment, right now, is about 9.51 kilowatts, and I want to show you what it looks like outside for the sun to show you uh, what it looks like, so let's check it out. All right, so that much sun, 9.5 kilowatts at about almost one o'clock. So that's pretty much what I'm producing with my system. All right, well, this is my April 2021 electric bill with Southern California Edison with Tesla Solar. So this shows right here that last month I had a credit of $18.29. That was a climate credit I received. So my new charges are $11.28. So Again, I don't have to pay uh, the basic charge here, so I have still have a credit of $7.01. So yeah, that's working out good. If you uh, zoom in here, this talks about net metering. You are billed annually for your energy charges because they can be offset by energy credits over a 12-month billing period. Any charges not offset by credits will become due at the end of your 12-month billing period. So that's basically explaining the net metering, what I send to the grid, what I pull from the grid, um, and the diff the net between the two, which I overproduce, so I send more than I receive. You also receive a monthly bill. It reflects the minimum amount due each month, which supports the cost of maintenance and operation for providing electricity. So I call that the basic charge. Every month I have to pay the basic charge, which is not part of the energy credits. So what I send there and what I receive, that's its own billing, and then the uh, basic charge is separate. So I pay between $10 and $12 for that connection fee each month. The energy credits, um, they, they're going to pay me for at the end of the year. So all year long, we do net metering. And at the end of the year, I'll, I'll have sent much more electricity than I used. And they'll pay me for that at the end of the year. I'm guessing between $150, $200. And that will offset this basic charge that I pay each month, $10 to $12. And it'll be a little bit extra. So at the end of the year, I should not have paid um, any electricity and got a little bit of money back from Southern California Edison. That's the plan. And we're tracking it every month. So like and subscribe. And and I'll show you at the end of the year the exact numbers if I made a little bit of money or not <laughs> and didn't pay for electricity. So we'll check that out at the end of the year. So, so far, so good. This is the fourth month of my 12-month billing period. So I started January, so it's going to be um, next January where we settle up. This uh, talks about net metering a little bit. So um, year-to-date charges, negative $538.27. And we'll settle this at the end of the 12-month billing period. So that's January of 2022. And uh, this just explains it a little bit more. Um, I'll read that real quick. You do not owe any energy charges as of this month. Only make a payment for this month's new charges. New charges is basically the connection fee. Keep track of your year-to-date charges as you may have charges in the future. If you are a net generator, which I am, at the end of the 12-month billing period, you may be eligible for a net surplus compensation. Yes, I should be eligible for that. I have a huge system that is uh, oversized at the moment for my needs. And uh, I should have a lot of el extra electricity sent there, so they should pay me for that at the end of the year. They don't pay much for it, so you don't really want to oversize your system to get paid for it. But you will get something for it. So um, I'm in the, yeah, the fourth month of my 12-month billing period. So we'll check that out. Let's scroll down and see if we have any 
interesting information. This is all just basic information that they put on the bill every month. So you can pause and read that if you're interested. Don't want to read through all that. Um, let's get down to, yeah. So the winter cost period. So I'm in the winter um, billing period. There's a summer and winter. I'm in the winter. It ends May 31st right there, October 1st through May 31st. And then in the summer, um, they bill you differently in these two periods. So that's why they do summer and winter billing. I am on time of use. And you can see uh, mid-peak, off-peak, and super off-peak times there. Uh, my off-peak and my super off-peak are the same cost. So even though they separate them, um, they charge me the same for electricity during those two periods. The mid-peak, 4 to 9 p.m., that's the expensive one. So at that time, um, they charge more. So, yeah, I charge my electric car uh, usually any time other than 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. because I get charged the same. So usually at night, but I can do it during the day. You know, if my solar's uh, generating a lot of electricity, I can charge it during the day, no problem. But, yeah, so we'll go down to your past and current electricity usage. So this kind of breaks down my consumption and my uh, generation. So you can see right there, mid-peak, off-peak uh, consumption, 60, 468, and 2 for the different time of use. And then the generation, negative 275, negative 20, negative 1541. So you get the net between those consumption and net generation, and you get negative 1306 kilowatt hours. So for the month, I have sent back 1306 kilowatt hours uh, more. So yeah, it keeps adding up. And I like how they show you, uh, you know, this year and last year's kilowatt hour use by day. So last year, um, I averaged 20.447 kilowatt hours a day. And this year it's negative 42.13 kilowatt hours a day. It looks like I, you know, I'm majorly overproducing, but again, we, uh, we plan on getting two more electric cars um, during the summer. We're going to be using a lot more like uh, air conditioner. So my usage is going to go up quite a bit. And I bought the system size for that. I oversized it for that. So I didn't have to add on to it later. It's cheaper to get solar all at once than to buy it and then install it and then have somebody buy it again and install it again. So yeah, that's where I'm at with that. And on the right, the consumption, net generation, total electricity usage, that's just explaining what I just said there. Uh, how much I pulled from the grid, how much I sent to the grid, and what the difference is between the two. 1,306 kilowatt hours. So sending a lot more electricity than I'm using at the moment. We'll see this summer. So details of your new charges. Yes, I am on the timer use uh, D prime plan. It shows, this is basically what I call the connection fee. So your basic charge, the care discount, um, non-bypassable non charges, um, all of that together, you know, the credit at the end, it's $11.28. So my bill would have been $11.28 this month, but I had a credit from last month that offset that. So I don't have to pay for electricity this month. And, uh, the distribution charges, they call it, or, you know, basic connection fee. It's all kind of the same thing. It all breaks down there on the right. Additional information, service voltage, 240 volts. I do have an air conditioner that has 240 volts, and my car um, has a NEMA 1450 plug, 240 volts. Net surplus compensation option, rollover. Um, mine is set to rollover, but I don't want rollover. I want it to be check. Check is when they send you a check at the end of the year. Um for all the extra energy. So at the end of the year, rollover would roll your uh, energy credits over into the next year so you can use them. I don't want that because I don't need to use them because I'll generate more electricity next year than I'm gonna use too. So I'm just generating way more than I need. So I don't need rollover. Um, they told me I cannot change that till the end of the year billing. They'll be changed to check. They'll talk to me and do you wanna roll it over or do you wanna check? And I'm gonna say check. So they'll change that at the end of the year, probably uh, December, January time. So yeah, that's... That information, let's scroll down. This is just basic information they put on every bill, if you want to stop and read that. And let's see, details of your tracked charges. So yeah, this shows um, pretty much by the hour, kilowatt hour, what they charge. And so it shows what I get charged, what I get credited, um, delivery charges, generation charges. So that breaks everything down. And the net between the two at the bottom there, I get for this month, I have a credit of $239.98. So yeah, that shows shows all the breakdown. And then on the right here, it says additional information regarding your net consumption generation. Your year-to-date energy charges total as of previous month was negative 298.29. Your current month energy charge total negative 239.98. So your year-to-date energy charges for the total year, negative 538.27. 
And year to date, so far, I've sent back uh, more than I've used 3,363 kilowatts. So that's where I'm at on the fourth of the 12th, 12 month billing period. I think that's all the information. Yep, that's the last of it. So that's my bill for April 2021. Solar's working out just great so far. Okay, for the question and answer, I had three questions that I get asked a lot in the uh, comments. So one of the questions is, is my system grid tied? Why or why not? Um, my system is grid tied. So I kind of use the grid as my battery. I send energy to the grid and I pull energy back at night when there's no solar. So I use the grid as my uh, battery, basically. Um, I do not get power outages. Um, I've been here 25 years and the most, the longest power outage we've had was just like a couple minutes turned off and back on. So I really don't have, get power outages. Um, so I don't have a, a backup battery, which is the second question. Um, I get that question a lot. Do you have a backup battery? Did you get a Tesla power wall? Um, I do not have a Tesla power wall. I would love to have one. They're great. Um, they do nothing but great things. So, um, <laughs> Uh, they're expensive. That's the only reason I haven't got one. I think if you get a single one, it's around nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000. If you get two, it's around seventeen, eighteen thousand $18,000. They give you a discount if you get multiple ones. Um, but uh, I would love to have one, but they're just, you know, it's not financially makes sense right now because since I don't get power outages, I don't, I can't really use one. But if a power outage ever did happen, it would be nice to have one. And you never know, right? And also some people do, uh, this is a third question, arbitrage with your, uh, backup battery so you know the expensive time that it costs to buy energy from Southern California Edison or your electric company you could use your battery instead of uh, buying energy from them so for me 4 to 9 p.m. is the most expensive time to buy energy from Southern California Edison so I could set my battery up to use my battery between those expensive times and then uh, the cheaper times I could use uh, energy from the Southern California Edison. So basically I would use my battery during the expensive times. I would use the grid during the cheap times. And when you send energy back to the grid during the expensive times, you can make more money that way. So instead of uh, using the energy in the house, I could use the battery and send my solar back to the grid during the expensive times. So you can kind of make money that way, but the batteries are so expensive that you really can't. Not for me anyway, everyone's situation's different. Everybody's uh, power things different, but for me getting a battery would cost more than the money. I would save sending uh, Energy back to the grid during the expensive times and using my battery during the expensive times. So I do get that question a lot And again, everyone's case is different for, for me. You know, it, it just wasn't worth it Okay, well that was part of my solar uh, series uh, to uh, never pay for electricity again the rest of my life with net metering through Southern California Edison and also I have an electric car never paying for gasoline again. Um, so save thousands of dollars. I'm just documenting this. So if you would like to see more videos on that, like and subscribe. And also I have a Tesla referral link. So down in the description. So if you want to use that, you can get discount on solar or free charging miles through Tesla if you order a car. So we'll see you on the next one.